Hey everybody, welcome to Q&A video number 22. Make sure you keep asking questions that are rather about, they can be about anything. Fair warning, I do not respond to review requests, which are what do you think about insert game here, or LP requests in the videos. I respond to them in the comments. So, there you go. Anyway, let's go ahead and start with a question from 3 Days Grace Rocks. In your opinion, how big of a role does storytelling or plot play in a video game? Depends on the game type, um, by that I mean genre. There are a lot of genres where you can really skimp on the story. Uh, First-person shooters, strategy games, um, puzzle games really don't even need a story. But the ones that really need good stories are adventure games and role-playing games. And that is because that's going to be what's going to drive you throughout the game. You're not going to focus on the gameplay. Because those games' uh, gameplay isn't exactly the most involving. Like adventure games, a lot of the time you're just clicking on things or you're typing in commands or something like that. You're not actually getting into intense action or anything. Same goes with role-playing games. Um, they're, they're less involved in the gameplay department than other genres out there, so the focus tends to be more on the story or the characters or something like that than on the gameplay. I think that if you're doing a linear game and your gameplay is really kind of minimalized, then you need a really good story to actually pull that through. Um, next one is from Alarama One. What is your opinion? <coughs> excuse me. What is your opinion on games experiments with AI like the Free Facade? Do you think that AI will ever achieve perfection and full interactivity in the near future? Which games do you think did uh, did NPCs AI better in the whole history of gaming? Um, well, I can go ahead and respond to the last bit really quickly. Uh, Far Cry and Fear did it really well uh, for their times, anyway. I think Far Cry's AI is still surprisingly solid. But uh, Fear did it really, really well. I was really pleasantly surprised by that. And if you played Fear, then you know it has really good AI. But, um... As for the uh, experiments and stuff, Facade was an early experiment, and it really shows because it doesn't react well to the user. Uh, you'll enter commands, or you'll enter things to say, and it will just sit there and be like, um, okay. And the people will respond, um, uh, uh, um, um, and then just go into other conversations and such. So, facade doesn't really work all that well. Um, it, it was kind of a cool idea. It's just they really needed a lot more um, development before they would have gotten it to optimal levels. But as for will it achieve perfection and full interactivity in the near future, I don't know. It's hard to say with the current, uh, way technology is going. I mean, I'm in the computer science field, and I I'm look on the things that are going on right now, and I'm like, well, this is pretty crazy stuff. But the development can sometimes have really big spikes or just all of a sudden be scrapped and now have to do something else. So it's hard to say when we'll see so-called AI perfection, but um, I don't think it'll be in the near future. I think it'll be in, at minimum... 30 years, probably more than that, to be honest with you, because to get full AI and everything, you're going to need a lot more computing power and such, in your average computer anyway. But then you run into other problems like, oh, I don't know, Skynet, iRobot, you know, that whole thing. But, um, anyway, let's go on to a question from Jack the Poner. How long does it usually take for a whole LP, uh, Let's Play to be finished and completely up, uh, published on YouTube? Uh, depends on the game. Sometimes I can finish them really quickly, uh, like I did with Portal. That didn't take very long to uh, finish at all. Um, the uh, shorter games tend to uh, take a lot less time, uh, but the longer ones, it can be anywhere from weeks to months to even years, depending on, what, of course, what the game is. Like, I still haven't technically finished the Castle of the Winds Let's Play, um, because I finished the first part of it, but now I have to do the second part, which is actually an entirely different game. So, I haven't uh, done that yet, and that's been years since I did the uh, first Castle of the Winds LP. But, um, as for other things, usually months, uh, because I need to find time to actually do the Let's Playing. Uh, you would be surprised how hard it is to find time to actually sit here and record uninterrupted. Um, it's easier for doing it with uh, reviews and view videos like this because I can actually mess up and like pause recordings and stuff like that. Whereas with Let's Plays, I have to be completely uninterrupted. Otherwise, I'll just lose my train of thought and have no clue what I'm doing anymore. So, I run into a lot of problems with that. 
But other than that, it, it's, it can go all over the place. Um, like, for the current LPs, which are uh, KOTOR and um, Return to Castle Wolfenstein, I, I'm going to guess several months from now I'll be finished with them. It also depends on what I get caught up playing as well. Uh, like, the next month is probably going to be lost to Mass Effect 3, to be honest with you. So, um, don't expect a heck of a lot from that. But, uh, yeah, it, it varies depending on the game. Generally, however long it takes to actually finish a game, that's how many uninterrupted hours of recording I need. So, that'll give you an idea. Next question is from Dark Souls is Awesome. Hey DW, what do you think about the Mac fanboys that bash any PC that's not Apple? I think they're complete idiots. I mean, sure you're paying, you know, thousand dollars for a laptop that's really no better than any other laptop out there, but that doesn't really give you the right to be a dick about it. I mean, I think Macs are just ungodly overpriced and incredibly mediocre for what you pay for. So and I've never actually liked that OS, uh, even through the 90s, I never liked it. I was always like, why doesn't this work <laughs> this way, and why doesn't this work this way? This doesn't make any sense, and all that. It's, it's, it was a mess. So I've never liked Macs, and I have made that well known to people whenever they're using Macs, it's, and they act like it's the best thing in the world, and I'm like, um, no, Macs are terrible. I know from experience. And they're like, oh, well, you're just not using a Mac. It, it, people like that are obnoxious, and I think you should just avoid them at all costs if you can. But um, in the event that you can't avoid them, refrain from confronting them about it because they're never going to listen to you. They're just going to spout a bunch of bullshit at you, and it's going to annoy you to no end. So I think they're completely annoying, and I'm glad to see that they're actually kind of going away. Because Macs seem to be filtering more into the mainstream again, and that's a good thing for these guys because then they lose their sense of entitlement that they've that they're somehow better than the rest of people who aren't using Macs and stuff like that. So at the same time, though, Mac is kind of a problematic OS for a lot of things and that so on and so forth. Uh, next one is from Shorty sixteen sixteen. How much time does it take you to do a, a game review, including research, recording, etc.? Well, uh, this is another one where it depends on the length of the game too. Um, First off, I have to finish the game. That can take quite a while, uh, which means that that's why I take so lo much time to do reviews of like uh, really long games, you know, uh, role-playing games or strategy games and stuff like that. It takes me a, quite a while to do those because I need to finish them. But other than that, the actual reviewing process doesn't take me very long. It maybe take me an hour or two, uh, depending on the situation. I usually get uh, information about a game beforehand. Um, like, when I get a game, for instance, I'll actually uh, make a little folder with the uh, the cover art for it and the um, basic information of developer, publisher, when it was released, what platforms it's on, what its ESRB rating is, if it has one, um, what its genre is, that sort of thing. System requirements, I'll put those in there, too. And I'll get all that compiled beforehand, and then I'll actually play the game. But um, that, that doesn't actually take me very long. It takes me maybe 20 minutes something like that. Recording the review itself um, takes me however long the footage is to record the footage. takes me however long I need to actually flesh out my thoughts on the game. Which that can be anywhere from 10 minutes on up through an hour. I mean, it depends on how many times I screw up the recording and everything too, so that doesn't help. But it actually isn't that long of a process to actually make a review. And as you guys know, I don't really truss up my reviews with any sort of fancy editing or anything, so I, I feel like a minimalistic approach is generally the best way to do things. So it doesn't take me that long to edit it either. In fact, most of the time is spent playing the game, and the ungodly annoying process of compiling it takes quite a while, but other than that, overall, the reviewing itself, maybe an hour or two, at most, sometimes 30 minutes, sometimes less than that. Playing the game can take a long time. Anyway, there you go, folks. That was Q&A 22, and uh, I will catch you guys in later videos.